Agincourt is probably a name that seems vaguely familiar to you, but perhaps you're not sure where you heard it. Maybe you heard it in a world history class or during Shakespeare's Henry V. Maybe it was on some documentary your father had on the television when you were growing up. After watching this video, I promise you that you will at least know the basics of this battle. The battle took place on October 25th, 1415, during the Hundred Years' War. The Hundred Years' War was a war that actually lasted roughly 116 years, though there were some, several long interruptions during that time. It mainly was fought between England and France, though several other European powers got involved as well. The conflict revolved around land disputes and arguments over rightful heirs and royal bloodlines, but that certainly is an oversimplification. England and France had already gone through two stages of the Hundred Years' War, known as the Edwardian War and the Carolan War, the former being mostly a victory for England and the latter being mostly a victory for France. When Henry V came to power in England, the country was hungry for war and the king was largely backed by the church, barons, and the parliament. France had split into factions and was led by an unstable king. Henry V invaded Normandy in 1415 with 10,000 men. He was initially successful in taking the port of Harfleur, but the fighting was grueling and dysentery broke out among his ranks. He retreated to Calais, then searched for a place to, uh, to cross the Somme. They crossed at Voyennes and ran into a French army. The French were waiting for reinforcements and they were not quite ready for battle. Frankly, neither was Henry's army, but he knew that the delay would only lessen their food supply and give the French time to collect more troops. Henry divided his army into three sections, with longbowmen reinforcing the flank. The French had numerically superior army and looked like they should be victorious, however the treacherous terrain with a narrow field and thick mud favored the English. The French attempted a cavalry charge, but it failed due to the tight quarters and the superiority of English longbows. This charge really only served in muddying up the battlefield and making maneuvering more of a challenge. The French soldiers were well armored, which mostly protected them from arrow shot but also weighed them down in the mud. Many French soldiers could hardly raise their weapons from fatigue by the time they reached the English line, so the light-armored English had a good chance at defeating them in close quarter combat. King Henry himself fought in the battle and stood over his brother while he was dragged to safety after being wounded. Soon after this battle, Henry returned to England as a hero. The French loss at Agincourt caused further factioning in the country and made it easier for Henry in future battles.